Hello everyone and welcome to this June vlog. I am actually very much aware that I haven't actually started this vlog and I believe today is the 12th of June. But I was reminded to start the vlog because I went to pick up some books. You probably can't hear me. I went to pick up some books at the library. And to be honest, don't really know where I'm going to find the time to read all of these. And I also thought I had a fiction book in here, um, but I don't. So I'm going to have to shop my stash, clearly. So one i've just been loving my library i think i've said that in like the past two videos but honestly i just love it i just finished reading life on mars or something like that by tracy smith um, which i wanted to read for a really long time it wasn't one that i really enjoyed i ended up giving it two stars but i thankfully this has come through for me on the light from the library and this is swan by mary oliver i follow a poetry account called poetry is not a luxury and they seem to share a lot of her poems I'd never heard of her before, but the library does have a ton of, I say a ton, I think about three of her poetry collections and they have cues on them. So I'm like, yes, I'm glad this one came through. There's probably another one or another two that I'm waiting for, but I'll be really happy to get started with this. I'll get started on it later today. The other book that I got is The Myth of Normal by Gabor Maté um, with his son, Daniel Maté. And this is Trauma, Illness and Healing in a Toxic Culture. Now, I believe obviously when this book was coming out, he did do a lot of promotion on, on the book. And I'd heard of him like before that, but it was really when like this book was coming out that the, you know, the intensity of where I started to see him really started to ramp up. Um, so I really actually wanted to read this. I wanted to buy it. Um, but like I said, I've been loving using my library and not spending my money. So I requested this. And again, this was the one that had a uh, long queue on it so it took a while to come through and i've got two weeks to read it look how big it is jesus christ the reason i say that is because i'm actually currently reading this by him which is when the body says no the cost of hidden stress and i actually think this was waiting at me for the library for quite a long time um so i just eventually picked it up maybe like three weeks ago uh one thing I will say about this book, that whilst I'm enjoying it, I'm on page 76 of it, whilst I'm enjoying it, the overall message really is, if you spend your time, like, internalising all your feelings, not talking about how you feel, only caring for others in the sense, you know, when it's people that don't really, like, respect you and stuff like that, you will either develop <laughs> a chronic illness or you will die, away, die and pass away from some disease. Die and pass away, same thing, from some disease. And I'm just like, this is very bleak, but I appreciate the um what's the word the intensity of the message so yeah i'm reading this at the moment and as you know my standard practice is to read a fiction book a non-fiction book a poetry collection and listen to an audiobook so i am quite non-fiction book heavy at the moment which is interesting because when i look at my story graph stats i have read more fiction than non-fiction which kind of always is the way for me but i've definitely had a focus at the beginning of the year of reading more fiction and i was kind of like i don't really want to read any non-fiction but now it's ramping up so the other book that i got is this which is how to change your mind the new science of psychedelics by michael pollan i've actually watched his netflix series which is basically i think kind of about the same topic of the book but in that he goes through and talks about different um psychedelics so i believe it's like mushrooms lsd all this sort of stuff and it's a very interesting series so i just wanted to read i can't remember where it came up for me about this book um it could have been like when I started following like an Insta Instagram account called Steve Talks and like some other ones um, and his name definitely came up. So I'm just really intrigued to see what the science is behind like psychedelics and stuff like that. And the other book that I requested is Minor Feelings, A Reckoning on Race and the Asian Condition by Kathy Park Hong. I remember when this book came out, everyone was talking about it. It sounded absolutely brilliant. It sounded really good because there were bits of it that I was hearing other people share that I was like, so applicable for so many minorities. I really wanted to read this so I can understand more about Asian, I guess, commentary, focus, exploration on race as well. Um, it's just not something that I think I read a lot of. Obviously being a minority myself, I read a lot of things about like being a black minority, but others not so much. So this is a way of expanding my reading in that sense. So yeah, there are no fiction books in there. So I'm definitely gonna have to shop my own stash, which is fine. I need to like, there are tons of books that I have that I need to read. Um, so yeah, this is welcome to the June vlog, a little late, but better late than never. Hello everyone. I want to talk to you about this book, which I'm absolutely flying through and I'm gonna go get some lunch and go to a park and probably finish this off. And shout out to Camilla for reminding me that I had this book because if she hadn't, I definitely wouldn't be reading it right now. And I'm just loving it. 
So I got sent this as a finished copy. Um, I believe it's published by HarperCollins. And as you know, I have done a review of the Auntie series on my channel, so I'll link it above. Um, but this is a solo one, which I be believe is gonna be the beginning of a new series. And this is about Vera Wong and she owns a tea shop. She's an elderly lady and she basically starts to investigate his murder. The book opens up with her like talking about her morning routine. She gets up at like 4 a.m. and has like the most like, regimented routine everything she does and then going for a walk and all this sort of stuff and then starts her tea shop which is dwindling i say starts opening her tea shop which is dwindling in terms of customers um and this is set in san francisco i believe and she has one son named tilly and one day she wakes up <laughs> at 4 a.m normal routine to a dead body in her tea shop she goes downstairs and the dead body is in her tea shop and that's when everything kicks off but it says here, when Vera wakes up one morning to find a dead man in the middle of her tea shop, she knows it's going to take more than a strong longing to fix things. Knowing she'll do a better job than the police possibly could, because nobody sniffs out a wrong do sniffs out a wrongdoing quite like a suspicious Chinese mother with time on her hands, Vera decides it's down to her to catch the killer. And so yeah, she decides she is going to investigate this crime. She, she, does, she does a couple of things which she shouldn't have done when the body was there, and then, you know, people start just like turning up at her shop you know and she's just a bit like hmm the murderers always revisit the the scene of a crime and it's just funny the way she talks to these guys the way that these guys are also hiding things one thing i will say is there are a couple of like unbelievable things in terms of the characters i think but it's done in a nice way that we know they're lying obviously because we're reading it but like vera is like hmm obviously bold face lie and the characters are suspicious of each other because they're like hmm that doesn't really add up but everyone is willing to let it slide because they know they're lying about something which i think is perfectly fine because that's what people do in life so it's one of those plot points which would usually annoy me sorry if you can hear that drilling but in this it doesn't because it's acknowledged and done in a really good way uh there's lovely bits of here of talking about different food i absolutely love it um and yeah it's really nice it's totally 100 percent when i'm re reading it um reminding me of an elderly lady is up to no good only because they are two older women um i am assuming the author probably knows about that book series but there is nothing in here that i'm like well this is a direct copy it's all like very unique and different but I'm really enjoying this. It's really funny. It's such an easy read. I started it yesterday and I am already on page 150. It's just so easy for me to consume. So yeah, with that, I am going to go to the park and enjoy my Friday afternoon because I finished work at 1 p.m. and that is fantastic. Hello guys. So I, wow, the lighting is so intense here. Um, I'm not sure how flattering it is because look at that. Ooh, the hay fever. The hay fever, and apparently why I found out that I might have seasonal asthma. But I came on here to talk about two books that I've read. Um, I finished reading this poetry collection, which is Swan by Mary Oliver. I gave this two out of five stars. I thought I was really going to like this because I'm not sure if I mentioned in this vlog, but um, follow an Instagram account. Poetry is not a luxury. They always post loads of poems from her, but she has so many collections. I think this is her... It says this is her 20th volume, so they could be publishing poems from so many of her other ones. There were some poetry collections in here that I did like, um, and they were okay, but the majority of the poems, I was just like, this this is just like fine to me. Um, so I'm just trying to make myself look less, I don't know, horrendous, this is going on the internet. Um, so not my favourite collection, but I still have another one reserved at the library from her, so I'm going to give that one a go and I'm pretty sure there were a couple of others so I'm also going to reserve those. But the book I really want to talk about is this one which is Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jessie Santanto. I am so 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 glad Camilla mentioned this because I dug it out and I really enjoyed it. I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. It really does remind me so much of the Auntie series but obviously this is like so different because I say so different it's not that different but this is focused on one character and she is an older woman Vera who runs a tea shop and one day a man is murdered in her tea shop and it is about her basically um, going on investigation for that because she doesn't really trust the police and it's a nice character she meets along the way but it's also a nice exploration of her culture of you know the fact that her son doesn't really contact her but then how she finds these new friends that you know she's investigating for murder but they be essentially become like new found family which is just really nice there is so much in here that is you know 
uh what's the word like adjacent it reminds you so much of the auntie series it's really funny in that sense of the way vera takes control and the things that she does um but then it's also just funny in terms of the murder investigation where you're just like who actually killed this person like sometimes i think you get so caught up in all the characters and the things they're doing and the things they're hiding that you're like well i know it's actually not any of them so like who who did the actual murder this is really enjoyable and at the end she talks about the fact that when this idea came to her, she did end up putting the third book of the auntie series on hold. So that is on hold at the moment. And she is writing also another book, which I believe is a thriller or something like that. Um, but don't quote me on that last bit. So yeah, so it was good to hear like where we were going with the auntie series. Good to hear that it hasn't stopped. Um, but yeah, this was a pleasantly enjoyable read. I gave it three out of five stars. Um, and now at the moment, I am reading The Golden Notebook by Doris Lessing. I'm not that far into it. So I don't have much to say about it, but I'm looking forward to reading that. And yeah, that's where we are with the reading halfway through the month. Hello guys, I want to talk to you about the book that I've recently finished before I go and return it to the library in a few minutes. So I just finished this last night, which is When the Body Says No, The, Hidden, the Cost of Hidden Stress by Gabor Mate. I actually also have this by him, but unfortunately this is due back today and I think I picked it up, yeah I must have picked it up two weeks ago, but during the time I was reading this and I just haven't got around to this. So rather than hoard it <laughs> um, so that the next person can't read it, I'm just going to return it and then um, put it on reserve again because I have two other like non-fiction books that I could actually read. So it's fine to like not read this instantly, even though this is the one that came out I believe earlier this year um, and this is a couple years old. This book was so interesting to me because I really liked it and, and I really felt like I didn't want to like it when I first started reading the contents of it. And really because the main reason for that was really because it felt like he kept saying that, you know, if you didn't take care of yourself or you repressed your emotions and all these sorts of things, that so you essentially would get some sort of terrible disease or chronic illness. And I was just like, I don't like that message. I was like, I feel like it's a bit like fear mongering. But as I kept reading, you know, and it just, I kept thinking about it some more, I just, you know, it just transpired to me that that's not what he was trying to do. He's really trying to put that sort of emphasis on the fact that there are real consequences to sort of the environment that you're in and the stress that you put your body under and those con those consequences manifest themselves sometimes as these diseases. So, um, and he's really careful in the beginning to, you know, talk about the fact that it's not about blame. You don't get cancer because you keep all your emotions inside, you know? Um, but he's talking about the environment and the way that that plays on your body. So if, you know, you grow up in a very stressful childhood home, your childhood experiences are very stressful, people are violent, or you, uh, you know, made to suppress your emotions, all the variety of things. And then as you go older, you keep on doing these things, you keep putting other people first, you keep looking after other people. And once you develop some sort of illness, it's about how your body is just saying, I cannot cope with the things that you are doing anymore. And what he talks about in here is like different illnesses, so like ALS or diseases, rather ALS. Less, um, ultra colitis and some other ones right or and cancer and he looks at the sort of people that you know there's like studies been done on this so he's looking at the research of that of the types of people that get this and the types of people that you know don't make recoveries or like just what their life experiences are like and you know in some of them he's saying that you're able to like pinpoint a personality there will always be like you know for a certain disease there will always be people with certain personalities that have them because they just keep pushing their body keep pushing their body or keep pushing themselves and then eventually they get some sort of disease so it's not really sim as simple as like cause and effect but he really talks about the fact that your environment plays a huge part on you know how a disease manifests itself but also obviously like we probably a lot of us already know how you recover um, so it is very, very interesting how he crafted this book and it's one that's going to give me like a lot of food for thought. There are so many like sort of quotes and bits in here um, that I just have underlined, well I say underlined, I've just bookmarked, earmarked the pages, I can't underline this because it's a library copy, which I'm just going to note down in my journal. One of the bits that stood out for me was towards the end where he says a therapist actually told him sometimes in life you're going to have to ch have to choose between either feeling resentment or guilt. So, you know, if someone is asking you to do something and, you know, <laughs> I get this a lot and I feel like it, reason it resonated with me so much is because that's what I've been struggling with this year and it's more I've been struggling with guilt, struggling with guilt in saying no to things, but that's so that I don't feel resent resentful. When I saw that, I was like, oh my God, that's literally what I've been doing this year. But it's like one of those things where you're always going to have to make choices and sometimes 
even the choice that's best for you isn't going to feel good. You're going to have to sit with that discomfort. You're going to have to sit with that guilt. But that is so much better than sitting with the resentment of that person because that resentment is going to eat away at you. It's eventually going to affect that relationship and like eat away at that relationship as well. So sometimes you just have to choose the guilt. You have to <laughs> absorb that guilt. But that in the long run is better for you. So that's just an example of one of the things that I found really helpful. But it just talks about so many things in here that I was just like, oh, I do that. And, you know, the, I didn't know there were, like, names and terms for it. But just overall, it just felt like a really good sort of analysis, but also dive into things like this and just making sure that you're thinking about how much of what you're taking on a daily basis and the mental capacity or physical capacity towards your body, how much that could later affect your life and how, you know... It might be easier to people please now, but later, what are the effects that that's going to have on yourself and your life? So it was a very interesting one. And I struggle sometimes with books like this because obviously, like, I'm just a normal person. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a psychologist or anything like that. So I'm not going to go and read all of these papers that, you know, he's quoting and all these studies and things like that. So I have to get them in this form. But obviously, all the time, you have to take these things, like, with a pinch of salt. But then if they resonate with you and they make sense to you, then I think it's sometimes fine. But obviously, I... I draw the line sometimes with the super kooky stuff. Sometimes I'm just like, you say that and people are believing the weirdest shit and you're just like, well, <laughs> if it makes sense to them, it makes sense to them. But, you know, um, it's just use use your brain sometimes, you know. I like that quote where it's like, don't be so so open-minded that your, your brain falls out, you know. Um, but I liked this. So I am really looking forward to the myth of normal because I think this talks a little bit more about our perception of what like normality is how we view other people whereas that obviously is very much talking about the hidden cost of stress the the effects that sort of the way we live our lives will have on our body and it's very interesting in that book because it's not talking about like your terrible diet or anything like that it literally is talking about in such like an emotional capacity of the things that you need to do um to make sure that your body kind of is disease free and at the end of that book he does talk about the seven a's which is sort of like um i'm talking about that book and holding this book up which is sort of just talking about like they're sort of essentially like different strategies but one thing about this book is it really does talk about the research and clients and things like that it doesn't try to recommend you any sort of strategies to like get you better and things like that but towards the end there's like the seven a's which is like acceptance awareness blah 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 blah, blah. So yeah, looking forward to reading this book, but I think it's going to have to be one that I read maybe next month or whenever I get it through again. A book that just came through is this one, which is Shame is an Ocean I Swim Across, poems by Mary Lambert. I can't remember where I heard about this poetry collection, but I yeah, decided to finally order it. I don't know who cut these pages. I don't actually know if you can see that, but ooh, they have been terribly cut. So yeah, I'm going to go to the library, return those books, and then probably pick up some others, because I think there are some others there for me to collect. But I think in terms of this vlog, so I hope you enjoyed me talking about the books that I have read this month. And yeah, I'll see you in the July vlog. I can't believe we are halfway through the year. That's crazy. Like, very, very crazy. But anyway, I'll see you in the next vlog. Bye.